Well, what do you think about Quatermass in the Pit from 1967? Does that qualify as real horror? Quatermass in the Pit? It was kind of creepy. It was, yeah, yeah, it was definitely horror. Kind of sci-fi, probably more Uh on the horror side of it, though. Horror sci-fi. Yeah. Still, he's still a space expert. When there's when there's space issues, who do when you the call? Aliens call. Quatermass. Quatermass will do it. <laughs> Quatermass. Director Roy Ward Baker, written by Nigel Neal, stars James Donald. Not the same guy as the other two movies. This guy is um, maybe a little older. He's got a beard. He's kind of chubby. Sort of a dark-haired Santa Claus-looking guy. Oh, ten years have passed. Andrew oh, Keir oh. and Barbara Shelley. And they invented, they invented color in the last ten years, too. It's a color movie. This is 1967, mm-hmm. so it's a lot newer than the other two. Yeah. First one was 55, the second one's 57. Took ten years to get this one done. Mm-hmm. And they haven't had a fourth one since... Mm, so, they, they who knows? Could. They should. Yeah. Spoiler alert, you like it? Mm-hmm. I'm kind of middle of the road on this one. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it oh. had its good points. Mm. It, 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 it had it, its it, slow points, too. It, yeah, it, it's a mix, but overall, yeah. Yeah. And I saw this one probably not when it came out, because <laughs> I, I would have been too. But yeah, I saw this on some, late night TV at some point. At some point when I was very, very young, and I didn't remember it very well. So it was nice seeing the whole thing. The only thing I can specifically <clears> absolutely <throat> say I remember is the big bug thing in the sky See, I, the didn't, I didn't remember that at all i remembered the ones they find in the ship and, okay and, yeah. and those creeping me out yeah. well men are digging in the london subway and they unearth several skeletons it gets into the newspaper as underground ape men mm-hmm. they aren't modern humans no They're... the experts think the skeletons belong to men who walked the earth over five million years ago much earlier than man was actually expected to exist. Mm-hmm. Dr. Roney shows them a clay reconstruction that does indeed look like a half-ape, half-man. One of the archaeologists finds something metal buried there, too. It's an unexploded bomb! So they call in the bomb squad. It's London. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. So they, the bomb squad can't identify it, so they dig it out more. Meanwhile, somewhere else, Dr. Quatermass is in a meeting arguing with the generals about a base on Mars. Colonel Breen has been assigned assigned to assist him in his efforts to build another rocket. He keeps blowing up the rockets. He never (laughs) Never gives up, though. (laughs) They examine the bomb and find more skulls. The neighborhood is not a bomb. No, all this is happening. It's clearly not a bomb by this point. Yeah, Yeah. it's all happening in an abandoned neighborhood as people are afraid to live in the area. Mm -hmm. The policeman more on that later. Yeah. Yeah, the policeman says people believe there were ghosts there. And there have been many strange sightings over the years. Mm -hmm. Strange noises, events, feelings, creepiness. They find strange claw marks on one of the houses, and the policeman runs out, terrified. And it's named Hobbs Lane, uh, which is a nickname for the devil. Hobb is, uh-huh, which they mentioned. Mm Hobb is one name for the devil. Reports go back to at least the 20s. And a digging project back then that they started and abandoned because all the workers were getting too freaked out. Mm -hmm. So there's some weirdness about the location. In the area, yeah. yeah. Quatermass suspects that the eight men were not from the Earth, but Roney says no, they definitely were from Earth. Mm-hmm. Roney's secretary shows Quatermass a report that says there were strange sightings back in 1927 when that particular area of the subway was being dug. <laughs> I just said that. You did. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, the colonel has unearthed not a bomb, but what looks like an intact alien spaceship. So There's also a sealed compartment seamless. that no one can open. Mm-hmm. And it's indestructible. It oh, yeah, they try, try everything. Torches and welders and grinders and doesn't scratch. Yeah. One of the men sees a figure walk through the wall, and it was a horrible creature. The description matches some of the accounts in the secretary's old newspaper articles. People hallucinating. Small like a hideous dwarf. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, one of the yeah. quotes from the... Yeah. <laughs> After a great deal of drilling, the door finally opens and they see dead bug-like creatures like giant locusts. Mm -hmm. The bugs are rapidly decomposing and falling apart, so it's a race to get samples and photos. Quatermass notices that the bugs resembled horned demons from legends and gargoyles. Mm -hmm. The ideas for those creatures had to come from somewhere. I think these are old friends we haven't seen for a time, Roni suggests. Quatermass asks, could this be a Martian? Hmm. Quatermass then goes to the newspapers and spills the beans about everything, enraging the government. He believes these insects experimented on early apes and helped to evolve mankind. 
And this also, was before 2001. And one thing, too, they do more research on the things happening in the site and church records and everything, things going back to the 1300s even. Mm-hmm. And then they find a cave painting 30,000 years ago that looks like the creatures. The bugs and, have been around. Yeah, yeah, they've been around. However, the government just claims it's a German <clears throat> pro- propaganda hoax in 1967. Yeah, mm-hmm. Maybe we're the Martians now, says Barbara the secretary. They hook up the mental projector to her, one of Quatermass's gadgets, and they can see the glimpses of the living Martians on their monitors recorded in her genetic memories. Mm-hmm, because Upon... she seems to be more sensitive to it than a lot of people are. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, so the, the vision she's having they can see on a television screen. It's kind of way out. It's kind of bad science. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Upon closer examination, the video show the Martians at war... They were very warlike and made humans to be the same way. The government, of course, refuses to listen, and they decide to open up everything for public examination. There's an electrical accident, and one of the workmen is killed. The accident also activates something in the ship. There is a mass panic as the ship starts to glow. Mm -hmm. The ship sucks all the life from Colonel Breen, and it's controlling Quatermass's mind. The city starts crumbling and falling apart. It generates a giant electronic vision of a Martian in the sky, and it's only stopped when Roni sacrifices himself to short-circuit the whole system. Mm-hmm. Boom. And that poor guy. I mean, the, the, the government, you know, when they reject the explanation and say, oh, it's just a German hoax. So it's, and they just kind of all leave. All the army and everybody and every, and and <laughs> the poor drill guy who's who they brought in a, some kind of drill that's harder than diamond and they brought in this specialist and he couldn't make a dent in it. He has to go back inside for his tools and that's when the ship starts. Him. Yeah, it gets him and that yeah that poor guy. And, <laughs> yeah, he gets a full dose of the. Telekinesis, tele, tele, telepathy forces that are still lingering. Yeah. Dead bugs. Mm-hmm. So basically, the ship absorbs power and converts it into yeah, yeah, mental energy. And yeah. Anyway, I like that. James Donald is far less grumpy and arrogant than Brian Donald in the t- first two movies. Mm-hmm. He's a smart guy, but he doesn't have all the answers. In the two previous films, he had the ear of the police and the higher ups in the government. In this one, no one listens to him. He has a few ideas, but in the end, Roni is the one who saves the world, not him. He's almost kind of a background character in a lot of this. Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned last week that I thought the second movie resembled Doctor Who from the 70s. Well, I think... This is even closer. I think it was important he was more of a sounding board, using his space knowledge and alien knowledge to figure out... He did a lot to figure out what was going on. Yeah, he helped. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Doctor Who from the 70s, this is even closer. It's even got a proto-brigadier and something like the unit as entities. Mm. You'll recognize them very quickly. Mm-hmm. This was much closer to the period of Doctor Who I'm talking about, so it seems extremely likely that the third Doctor situation was influenced by this heavily. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah very much so. Yeah. It looks like just another episode with different actors. Could very well be a Doctor Who episode if you switched it around a little bit. Yeah, have the Doctor instead of Quatermass. Yep. Quatermass. I understand what they were doing with the race memory and genetic traits, but it was a little overblown and a little hard to believe. Would you say bad science? Yeah, really bad science. I had seen this one many years ago, and the only thing I remembered was the vision of the big bug in the sky. Most of the details were pretty forgettable. Colonization by proxy is what Quatermass called it. So what do you think? Of the three, which one was best and worst? Hmm. Second was my favorite. Mine too. Yeah. yeah I gotta say. And I kind of think the third one was the worst. No. First one was the worst. Mm. Third one was... Third one was color. Third one is... was more cerebral. You had to think about... If you if you think about the third one, you appreciate it more. And the second one is just eye candy entertainment. You know, science fiction, 50s thriller nothing wrong with that (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah okay so So we both agree that crater mass 2 is the best of the trilogy Mm -hmm. yeah yeah you should see them yourself and see what you think you should yeah